years of testing resulted in the FieldTurf infilled system, a patented formula of cryogenic rubber and silica sand. This system provided ideal levels of impact absorption and energy restitution. Today, those ideal levels are known as MSP, Maximum Safety and Performance. MSP describes the degree of a field's hardness in which safety and performance are maximized. This hardness is measured by G-max, a measurement of G-forces present during surface impact. Not all fields meet MSP standards, which must fall within a G-max range of 120 and 180. This chart lists the typical G-max values of various sports surfaces. Like a well-maintained natural grass field, every field turf field conforms to the standards of MSP throughout its lifespan, helping athletes stay safer and more energized throughout the course of a game. G-Max values above 180 represent an overly hard surface where an excessive amount of energy is absorbed by the athlete during impact with the surface. A hard surface results in unnecessary wear and tear on an athlete's joints and muscles. G-Max values below 120 represent an overly soft surface. A soft surface will not provide adequate energy return and the athlete will expend unnecessary energy leading to premature exhaustion. The instability of a soft surface can result in strains and injuries. In order for athletes to receive the best of both worlds, the field must meet the MSP standards for surface hardness. Over time, all rubber or lightweight sand and rubber fields become either too hard or too soft to provide the ideal combination of safety and performance to the athlete. Imagine running on the beach. A newly installed virtually all rubber system is like running in the loose, dry and tiring soft sand. While a heavily used all rubber system is like running on the extremely hard, rigid and grinding bike path or pavement. Field turf sand and cryogenic rubber system can be compared to running along the shoreline, the perfect surface hardness. To compete with field turf, yet not infringe field turf's patented sand and rubber infill system, AstroTurf introduced AstroPlay a fiber matrix with an all-rubber infill and AstroTurf's underlying shock pad beneath it. And so the standard was set for all other turf systems that followed. All would contain all-rubber or lightweight sand and rubber infill and all would require a pad. Where a field turf system contains over nine pounds of infill per square foot, all rubber systems generally contain only three pounds per square foot. Competing sand and rubber infill systems also don't measure up to field turf. This demonstration illustrates the difference between field turf's patented infill and an imitator's product. Both start with the same amount of rubber. But Field Turf's layered system uses much more stabilizing sand, more than doubling the infill weight of our competitors' homogenized mixtures. Their product is virtually all rubber. And any activity on the field causes this lightweight infill to migrate or displace. By adding an inadequate amount of sand to their infill, field turf imitators offer none of the biomechanical advantages engineered into the field turf system. 
In this independent test, rubber displacement was measured across the width, center, and sidelines of a typical virtually all rubber field. Within a single step, there were startling variations in infill depth. The lack of infill leaves the athlete vulnerable to the hard subsurface below it, and the inconsistent levels can lead to rolled ankles and ACL and MCL injuries. At a four-foot drop height, infill variation of only three-eighths of an inch results in a significantly harder surface. This test shows G-Max levels and rubber displacement across an all-rubber soccer field. Independent testing of five field sites shows none register within the MSP zone. Infill variation of just half an inch raises G-Max by 42% to dangerously high levels of surface hardness. But Astroplay knew this, so it always placed a rubber shock pad below the turf to protect the athlete from injury when the rubber infill was displaced. One of the problems with an all-rubber field is uh, the rubber will migrate. And I have seen fields where rubber has migrated uh, in some instances severely. So that you have uh, where rubber migrates from one area to another, you have a lot more rubber in some areas and not near enough rubber in the other areas. That rubber infill is the only thing protecting the, the players from the stone base. A lot of times when you go to a, the actual site visits and see the fields, uh, we often notice not only because of the rain on the field that we had a lot of displacement of the rubber around the outside perimeter, but just from the foot traffic and the heavy use of it from not only from, let's say, gym classes or marching bands, you always saw a lot of rubber going to the outside of the field where the collectors were because of the crown system of the field itself. The rubber will displace and basically then you have nothing but basically a, a rock base and a, a piece of thin carpet between the player and the uh, ground. On the fields with, without a pad uh, that were tested just one year later, the G-Max went up markably actually. That's up to 480,000 more pounds of stabilizing mass. The equivalent weight of more than 30 full-grown African elephants. Does field turf need a shock pad? Field turf shock pad is its patented infill. This extraordinary mass provides a safe and shock absorbent surface that will remain in place over time. Well, once we found out about the uh, safety issue and the amount of infill per square foot, I found out that you really did not need a pad underneath the field turf field, but you really, like we sold, you did need a pad underneath the, the lower amount infill systems, like the three pounds per square foot all rubber systems. Independent testing verified the safety of field turf against all rubber infill turf and turf with a small amount of sand. In both helmeted and bare head impact testing, field turf was always the safest. Another key reason for infill displacement and migration is rainfall. Ambient rubber, the rubber crumbs used by all of field turf's competitors, have rough jagged edges. These jagged edges attract the microscopic air bubbles in water. The bubbles cause the rubber granules to float and gravity makes them migrate to the lowest points on the field. Which is why you will always see large amounts of rubber on the outside edges of all rubber fields. Wherever this rubber came from, it is no longer in place to protect the athlete and increases the risk of injury. Field turf uses only cryogenic rubber, a smooth-sided, rounded granule to which air bubbles will not attach which is why cryogenic rubber does not float like ambient rubber. The only way all rubber or lightweight sand and rubber fields can protect the athlete against the dangers of displacement is by installing a shock pad beneath the system. But don't take it from us. It was Field Turf's competitors who insisted that all rubber fields be installed with a pad for safety. Unfortunately, the increased costs associated with the pad made it impossible to compete with field turf, so they simply dropped the pad. <laughs>